We turn again to Hebrews in chapter 12 and verse 1. We saw last week that the Christian life is a race. And in order to run in this race, we are exhorted to lay aside every weight, every encumbrance, and also every sin, even the sin which so easily entangles us. Not only the sins that we can get rid of, quite easily, but that sin which keeps on besetting us, the sins that we have greatest difficulty with, we are exhorted to lay aside every sin, including that which makes us fall so frequently, and then let us run the race. In other words, we could say that it is when we lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us. Then we have come, as it were, to the starting line to run the race. We have come to the place where we have given up all conscious sin. And then we have come to the starting line. Then we can run this race. Now, one of the things that this epistle teaches very clearly is that one of the greatest dangers in the Christian life is to remain stationary without making progress. You remember when we studied chapter 5 and verse 12, the apostle says, Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you have need again for someone to teach you the elementary principles of the oracles of God. And he goes on in chapter 6 verse 1 to say, Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about Christ, let us press on to perfection. Two of the words that come a number of times in the book of Hebrews are the words better and perfect. The word better comes 13 times in the epistle. The word perfect comes 14 times in the epistle. These are two words that characterize this age of the new covenant. Since the day of Pentecost, Since the death and resurrection of Jesus, in this age of grace, the Holy Spirit gives us something better than what people had under the law. The law could not make anyone perfect, but grace can. Grace leads us into a life of victory over all conscious sin and leads us on to discover those things that are hidden, the lusts in our flesh, and gives us help to mortify them so that we might increasingly become like Jesus, that is running the race, and press on to that goal of perfect perfection, that is, into the likeness of Jesus himself. So, this is the goal towards which we run. Let us press on to perfection, the apostle says in Hebrews 6, 1. And the Hebrew Christians were in danger of standing still of being content with past experiences. And we are told here that the Christian life is a race. It is when we stand still that we are not only in danger, but very prone to and can easily backslide and sin. The best way to prevent backsliding is to slide forwards all the time or to run, to go ahead. The best way to keep ourselves from falling into sin is to run the race, to press on into more and more of the perfection of Jesus in every area of our life. If we do that, we shall be kept from backsliding in sin. To be kept from falling is not a static thing. It's not by standing still at the starting line that we keep from backsliding. No, we may have given up all conscious sin in our life. We may have also got rid of unnecessary weights and come to the starting line, but if we stay there and don't make progress, then it will only be a matter of time before we slip back into our former sins. But here we are exhorted to run the race. Let's look again at these two things that we are to do before we come to the starting line. We are to give up every sin, the sin which so easily besets us. And when it speaks specifically about the sin which so easily entangles us, That includes in it every other sin. Definitely the sins which we can get rid of quite easily. But also 
those sins which seem to dog our footsteps. We are to lay them aside. Now, the Bible could not give us an exhortation unless God has promised grace to help us to obey that exhortation. For after all, none of us can overcome sin in our own power and strength. The flesh cannot overcome itself. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why God has poured out the Spirit on the day of Pentecost so that we can receive this fullness of the Spirit and with that power lay aside the sin which so easily entangles us and every other sin so that as far as we are conscious and aware our hearts are clean that we have finished with all sin that we are aware of sin shall not have dominion over you for you are not under law but under grace this is the privilege of the new covenant that we have seen again and again by grace we can be free from all sin that we are conscious of so that consciously we need not commit sin at all that is the privileged position into which God brings us let us then lay aside let's lay hold of the grace that's available and lay aside the sin which so easily entangles us but not only sin sin is like a chain that ties our leg and a runner cannot run the race if his leg is chained to a post or a tree that's obvious but it's not enough that we break the chains and break the ropes that tie our legs down to something stationary. We may have done that. Yet there can be in our life what are not necessarily sins, but which can be weights. These could be compared to heavy stones that a runner carries in his pockets, which could slow him down. Heavy weights of clothing on his body. Think of an athlete. He wears as light clothing as possible. He doesn't have heavy weights in his pocket when he runs. He doesn't want anything to slow him down. So if sin can be compared to the chains and ropes that tie our leg that we are to snap and break if we are even to begin the race, the weights are those things that may not necessarily prevent us running in the race, but which will slow us down. These are things which are not necessarily sins, but things which are not profitable. Paul said in 1 Corinthians and chapter 6, Verse 12, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not profitable. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. There can be certain pursuits in life which are not necessarily sinful, but which take so much of our time that they hinder us in progressing along the Christian race. For example, a man can be so taken up with his business, he may be absolutely honest in his business, he may not commit any sin in terms of cheating, but he can be so taken up in terms of time with his business that he has no time to run the Christian race his time is taken up with the earthly for example we can spend so much time talking there may not be sin in our conversation but yet so much time in talking that we don't have time to read the word and pray you can spend so much time developing your musical abilities maybe you say it's for the Lord but if you're time is taken up in developing those abilities such that you don't have time to pray and wait on the Lord and read his word then certainly though you may not be sinning you have weights that you need to give up it's when we give up these weights that we find we make progress more quickly so it's not only sin known as sin that can hinder us Paul was so concerned that he should press on to perfection and get as far near the finishing line as possible in this one life. Think of having such a goal, that in the one life that God offers us, we redeem the time, we make the most of every opportunity, make use of every available means of grace, and accept the suffering that comes into our life joyfully, submit to God's dealing with us, so that in this one life we can progress as far as possible into that perfect likeness of Jesus. This was Paul's goal. He said, everything else I'm willing to count as rubbish. And I press towards this mark. And in his pressing on, he was willing to give up everything that was not profitable. So examine your life. See if not only you've given up sin, but even things that are lawful in your life, that are not profitable, give them up. And you will make great progress, great strides towards that perfect perfection of Jesus.